Hey everyone, this is Dear Jones. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I am so um, excited to show you guys some cool jewelry techniques using alternative materials. So um, as I stated before, my name is Dear Jones. Um, I'm a SCAD alumni. I graduated last year back in 2019 with my MFA in jewelry. So go jewelry department. Um, a little bit about me, um, I am an artist as well as a jeweler. I'm currently based here in Savannah, Georgia, but I am originally from Petersburg, Virginia. Um, not only that, um, I also um, do a lot of mentoring here in Savannah. Um, um, so we're gonna just go ahead and dive in into this awesome workshop tonight. So um, as I stated, uh, we're going to um, learn how to use alternative materials in this workshop. A lot of my um, studio practice back when I, when I was a grad student at SCAD um, pretty much focused um, on the idea of storytelling and play. And um, that was important because a lot of my work allowed me to achieve freedom and um, control from my past experiences. And in all truthfulness, um, I really did not enjoy metal when I first attended SCAD. Um, but it was through an internship that I took back in 2018 that kind of made me come back to it and allowed me to marry both the alternative material and metal together. So in this workshop, we're going to um, be making pendants today. And I'm gonna show you our example of how it's going to look in the end. So we're going to be using concrete and we're going to be using wood to come up with this cool pendant. All right, so the first thing that we need to do, you guys, um, we are going to first make a dome, which is here, okay? So we're going to make a dome out of our, our fire mesh that was, one, that was on the materials list. So the first thing that we're going to do is take our scissors and we're going to cut out a square. So I'm gonna open my copper mesh and I'm gonna cut out a square. It doesn't matter um, the size of it. It could be big or it could be um, small. So I'm cutting. So here's my square here. Once we have our square cut out, we're going to cut out um, another piece but this piece is going to be a lot smaller because this is gonna be a sample piece for our gold leaf that we're going to adhere to our pendant. So I'm gonna just cut out a smaller piece for a sample size. All right, so this is my sample size here. Now I'm gonna put my mesh over to the side since we're done with it. The next thing that we're going to do is um, cut a circle out of it. You do not. And also you don't need a circle template to cut, it, to cut it out and it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. So we're cutting our circle and we're gonna do it on our first um, square that we cut out. So this is our main square here, you guys. Um, also, if you guys have like questions um, throughout, um, throughout this live, definitely ask me because I definitely want to answer questions. And also one thing I forgot to mention to you guys is that I also work in um, this um, jewelry department at SCAD as a studio shop monitor. So if you guys have you know, some questions, definitely ask them. All right, so with our circle now, we're going to form, um, form it into a dome, which is here that I created as a little sample for you guys. So we're going to first take our circle and we're going to um, press in the center here and then we're gonna bring it upward. And in order to make that dome, we're gonna also begin folding in our sides here. So hopefully you guys can see. So we're gonna fold the sides in until we come up with a perfect dome. All right, so I've um, put three creases on the sides of it so that I can form it. Next thing that we're going to do, we're going to um, gently begin um, pressing the outside inward because we do not want to, you know, poke ourselves and I don't want to poke myself either. So I want you guys to be careful. So we're going to fold them in here. And then we're going to just simply go all the way around. Um, some, also, you guys, um, something that I also enjoy about um, 
using alternative materials, um, it's the it's the ability to just experiment instead of just using um, traditional, you know, metal and uh, fabrication techniques. Um, alternative materials definitely give you the um, the many possibilities to definitely experiment. After we um, have pressed our sides and we're going to take our um, flat nose pliers, which are here, and then we're going to press it down to make sure that it stays in place. So we're gonna go all the way around. Uh, one of my favorite classes that I took as a grad student um, in the jewelry department was um, 705. It was technical research. And I took that class with um, Jay Song and it was awesome because it gave you the chance to definitely experiment. And one thing that was very memorable about, about that class was learning about the um, Synetic Trigger Mechanism, which is an awesome design concept that I'll explain further. All right, so now that we have our dome here, we are now going to create a hook for our bail for our pendant. So this is how the hook is going to look. I'll put it up closer so that you guys can hopefully see it. So, this is the hook here. And to make that, we're going to take our six gauge wire. And um, I pretty much allowed it to be your choice. It could be copper, brass, or um, sterling silver. And we're going to also take our wire cutters, which is here. And then we're going to um, cut off maybe about an inch and a half just to be on the safe side. So we're going to cut it off. And then we're going to form our hook. So we're going to simply um, take our pliers and put it at the very top of the wire here and then we're going to roll it over on the pliers so we roll it over and i'm just going to straighten it out using the pliers as well all right so after you have your hook formed we are now going to take our flat nose pliers again which we used earlier and then we're going to um, put it against the hook here so we're going to do like that and then we're going to fold it over. So we're going to take this part here and then we're going to push it until we create a 90 degree angle. And then it's going to look like this. All right, so after we have our 90 degree angle created, we're going to then take our copper mesh again and then we're going to um, simply um, insert it on the inside, but we're going to place it far back so that the pendant can sit upright on us when we put it on. All right, so this looks pretty good here. And I'm gonna flip it around so that you can kind of see how it looks. It's gonna lay flesh against the copper mesh. So it's laying flat there. All right, so next um, we're going to take some of our 26 gauge wire and I have brass here that um, I'm going to use and we're going to use this wire to pretty much stitch the bell in place and we're pretty much going to be using all um, code connection um, techniques because um, a lot of us may not have the studio equipment or the tools that we need um, especially during this time um, dealing with COVID and how um, many of us may not be able to reach the facilities at SCAD. All right, so now we're going to take our wire here and then we're going to insert it into our copper mesh. So we're just gonna select one of the holes in the copper mesh here and then we're gonna insert it from the inside of the dome. All right, and then you wanna kind of um, separate it from, um, um, so put one, in in one hole and then put the other end of the wire in a different hole on the copper mesh so they can kind of stay in place once you put it inside. All right, so now it's holding in place for me and then I'm going to go in and out. So now I'm going to take one end and then I'm going to go in and then we're going to come back out if, if we're stitching. And this is going to um, hold the bell in place for us. This part is actually a little tricky for me, guys. So please forgive me. 
But yes, um, code connections are definitely uh, one of my favorites um, to use in jewelry because as I stated, I really did not like um, fabrication when I first entered um, the jewelry department. So I literally tried every way to kind of like work around it. And wire wrapping is also one of my um, favorite techniques because it's something that I've learned um, before coming into SCAD as well. And it kind of led me to let me to want to learn um, more. So that's why I applied to SCAD as a graduate student as well. All right, so we're going to keep on going in and out, out and in until it's held tight in place for us. Um, if you guys um, are kind of, I guess, lost on a step, definitely send me a message and I will um, catch you up on what's going on. But um, yes, as I stated before, um, the synetic, synetic um, trigger mechanism, um, that was a concept that I had learned in um, 705 technical research. And um, I don't know, it's, it's an awesome um, thing to use because it helps you think outside of the box. And it's not only just for artists, but it's also for people in um, everyday life who wanna come up with like new ideas for, you know, thinking outside of the box instead of in. I know I just said that again, but yeah. All right, so now that we're done, we're going to take our flat nose pliers again, and then we're going to um, press it down so that it stays in place. And then, as you see, it's not really moving. Um, the whole um, purpose was to um, definitely um, use the wire to hold it down so that it would not move. All right, so now we're going to take our flesh cutters again, and then we're going to snip off the ex excess wire. All right, so now that is perfect. So now we're going to take our wire cutters again, and then we're gonna cut part of the bail off. So we wanna um, probably cut off a quarter of it off. So we're gonna cut like a quarter off. All right. And then we're going to take our round nose pliers again, and then we're gonna hold it from the top, and then we're gonna bring it, roll it backwards. So like one here, we're going to roll it backwards. As you can see, we're gonna roll it backwards so that we can form the bail. All right, so I'm taking it and now I'm folding it backwards. All right, so now we have our bail created on our piece. So the next thing that we're gonna do, we're going to take some of our alternative materials. Um, I'm gonna move this out the way since I'm kind of done with it for right now. Um, I'm going to show you guys like a collection of my sticks. Um, a lot of the materials um, that I use um, are definitely materials that um, I collect um, off the ground. Um, some of it is um, definitely materials that some of my friends have um, given me. And uh, I just try to um, find new ways of, you know, coming up with new ideas by incorporating the synetic trigger mechanism into it. So I'm going to choose this piece of wood here. And I'm going to pretty much wrap it around the bottom of our bale. This piece is like huge. So it's, it's gonna be huge in the end. So we're gonna take more of our 26 gauge wire. Oh, I'm getting a little tangled up you guys. Um, for this one, I would probably cut um, probably 12 inches just to be on the safe side. And we're gonna use our wire cutters to cut it. All right. Next, um, I am going to begin wrapping it around my wood. So you wanna make sure that it's really tight so it does not come apart. So you're gonna hold a piece of the wire to the wood and then you're gonna start wrapping it around and make sure that you are holding it in place pretty tight. So you're going around and around. All right, so once you reach back to the top, um, you're gonna simply hold it tight and then you're going to twist it around so that it'll stay in place, just like that. All right, and now we're gonna um, 
do it once again so that we make sure that it stays in place for us, you guys. So wrap, 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 and then we're gonna bring it back to the top and then we're gonna twist it once again so that we make sure that it's really tight. All right, and then as you see, it's not moving. So now we're gonna um, take our um, copper dome again, you guys, and then we're gonna um, simply insert it on the bottom part here. So we're going to straighten our wire out just a little bit. I need to cut a little line off because this part is too long. All right, and then we're gonna insert it on the bottom half here. All right, so yeah, we're gonna put it in one of the holes. All right, and then as we, as the same as if we, um as when we created the bell, we're going to do the same thing for attaching our wood. So let me straighten up my wire just a little bit. So we're gonna go out and then we're gonna go bring it back in. All right, and then just um, twist it around your wood. So I simply um, took it out and then I twisted it around and I'm gonna bring it back inside so that it stays in place. All right, bringing it back in. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Same thing. All right, so now we're gonna take the other side and then we're going to bring it out. All right, and then we're going to wrap it around. And then we're going to bring it back on the inside. Bring it back on the inside. Oh, I see a question. What's the creator community like in Savannah? Did you collaborate with other majors? Um, the creative um, community in Savannah, um, it's definitely here. Um, the thing is, is you just have to um, pretty much kind of go out and find it. Um, because me, I'm, I'm honestly an introvert and I'm pretty much quiet into myself, but I do have times when I'm like actually just out there and just talking to the point where I can't stop talking. So um, you definitely want to try to um, go out and find those different places and begin networking. Um, in um, SCAD, um, I did um, collaborate with the photographer. And um, let me see, did I? No, I think it was just someone in photography. But one of the things I wish I would have done was definitely um, collaborate um, with people from other majors. That was definitely one of my downfalls. And I encourage anyone to go out and collaborate because it's very helpful. All right, so after you've um, put your wire back in on the inside, we're going to simply um, twist it on the inside just as we did the bail so that it stays in place. All right, so now it's staying in place. So now we're going to cut the excess wire off. And then we're going to take our flat nose pliers again, and then we're going to mash it down. All right, so now that we have it in place here, we're going to begin putting our masking tape on the inside of our dome. Sorry, you guys, I'm moving my tripod. So you're going to um, put your tape on the inside here. And we're um, masking this part off because um, we wanna put gold leaf on the inside and we wanna um, be sure that it adheres to the tape instead of the, um, the mesh because it has all the spaces on the inside of it. All right. So we're gonna keep doing that. Um, so for me to save some time, you guys, um, I already, have a piece here that already has the gold leaf. Well, no, not the gold leaf, the tape on the inside. And uh, one of the things that um, 
we're going to do next after putting the tape on the inside is adhering our concrete. I thought I had a sample on the side for it, but I didn't, you guys. So I'm gonna finish putting my tape on the inside. So you wanna make sure you cover out, cover up the entire inside for our gold leaf. But yeah, you guys um, continue definitely asking questions if you have more. Definitely. So um, for me, um, I guess some of the things that I've been doing um, during COVID-19 is um, definitely um, working on myself in a way, um, writing down ideas and, you know, um, working on my resume. So always, you know, um, working on my resume, definitely updating it every chance I get. Um, also, you know, working on business plans for, you know, ideas that I have. Um, I definitely feel like um, this time has given us um, the ability to, you know, just think, you know, just think, think about the things that we want and just um, bettering ourselves. Have you found any um, crap supply shortages? Um, uh, personally for me, I don't think I've really um, found any um, sh um, shortages in um, craft supplies. Um, generally, um, I, mean, I, I love shopping at Michael's, you guys, I do, but um, a lot of my supplies that I definitely need, like in terms of my metal and um, things of that nature, I just order it from uh, Rio Grande, which is a um, jewelry supplier. Um, it's awesome. I can definitely um, link it below before the live ends. But I also, um, sh um, you know, shop at um, um, Cool Tools um, USA. That's also another um, awesome um, distributor of um, supplies as well. All right, you guys. So after we have our um, tape on the inside, we are next going to go over to our concrete. So I'm gonna move everything else out the way so that I can have more space to show you guys what's next. So we're going to take our concrete um, we're going to simply open it. You don't want to use too much of it. Definitely not because we're just covering the, um, the outside of our pendant. Let me move all this other stuff out the way. All right, so I'm just going to use a popsicle stick to um, scoop it out onto my disposable plate. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do next is take our pigment. Um, I have black um, pigment dye. I don't know, I love the color of black for some reason every time I'm working with dye because it just makes the color pop. All right, mine is already open, so it's already spilling out. So you wanna um, add just enough so that you can um, turn the um, color of your concrete to the color of your dye. Um, definitely do not use the um, liquid because it's gonna definitely change the consistency of your concrete. All right, so we're gonna be mixing, 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 mixing. So I guess um, back to um, what I was saying. Um, so yes, um, I've been working on like my resume and uh, working on my business plan because I have um, goals of um, opening a nonprofit. So I've been trying to like gain as much um, experience as possible here in Savannah, just by um, watching other, you know, um, nonprofits within the city and just doing a lot of research in all honesty. All right, so now you see that my concrete is black. Um, we're gonna take our piece again, you guys. We're gonna take our piece. And then we're going to simply begin putting our concrete on the back side of it, which is here. And then you can kind of use your wood as a handle for it. So yeah, definitely. If you guys have more questions, definitely, definitely ask them to me because I wanna answer as many questions as possible. All right, so now we're gonna kind of just flip it around. Um, you wanna be um, really careful with this too. Um, uh, one of the supplies was also a, a toothpick. So once you um, start to get around the wood, you wanna use a toothpick to kind of, you know, get into the like the small areas that you can't reach with your popsicle stick without getting too much concrete on your wood.
So um, another thing that I've been um, doing um, during COVID, you guys, is um, doing a lot of exercising. I know that's kind of random, but, you know, um, it's definitely important, you know, to eat healthy um, during this time and ensuring that you take your vitamins, you know, because we definitely want to be healthy and strong um, during this time. All right, so I'm almost done adding my concrete to it. And um, oh yeah, this also goes back to our um, synetic um, trigger mechanism um, in terms of um, how to, you know, come up with new ideas in terms of, um, well, coming up with new ideas for your um, concrete. So one of the um, one of the terms for the um, synetic um, trigger mechanism is add. So I figured, hey, if we add um, pigment to it, um, it definitely um, changes, you know, our um, our idea of what um, concrete can be as well. All right, so now that we're done with that. All right, so, okay, I'm done. I got a little bit on the inside, but you can simply wipe that away as well. All right, so this is how it looks. All right, so now I'm gonna put this to the side. Uh, once your concrete cures, um, it's, it's definitely gonna take at least 24 hours for it to cure. And once it cures, you're able to adhere your um, gold leaf on the inside of it. So let me go back to the, um, the piece that I made for the workshop. So you're definitely gonna put the um, gold leaf on the inside and it's gonna look just like that. That's why I told you guys to cut out another, you know, sample piece of the copper. So with that, uh, we are going to take our tape and then we're going to put some of the tape on the outside of this, just how, just as how we did the inside of our piece for the concrete. And this is just an example of how it looks when it cures. So it's gonna be pretty sturdy. But you also want to be careful with it because it's also still just um, concrete patching. All right, so I'm just going to put another piece of tape on there. All right. So now to the gold leaf. Um, so it's pretty much just metal foil. Um, um, and I just call it synthetic gold leaf. Um, it comes in um, the gold tone as well as the silver tone. Um, we have our adhesive here that you buy with it. And then you also have your sealer that you put on afterwards. Um, one of the substitutions um, that I listed was just pretty much Elmer's glue. So I also um, bought some spray adhesive as well. It's a liquid form too, if you didn't you know, find it at the store. So um, of course, first you're gonna um, put your adhesive on, but I'm not gonna do that part because on the back it says that you have to at least allow it to dry for 30 minutes. And then once, you're, um, once it does dry for 30 minutes, then you put your sealer on here and then you have to also allow that to dry for what, at least 15 to 30 minutes. So I'm going to instead use the spray adhesive. I'm just gonna spray it a little bit because as soon as I spray it, it's going to automatically become sticky. All right, so to apply your um, gold leaf, we're just gonna turn to a page in the book. I'm gonna move my concrete out the way. Turn to a page. And then we're going to um, just tear off like a little small piece. And you can also use your paintbrush to help you adhere it on better as well. So this is a, a lot bigger, so I'm gonna choose a smaller one. So this is my paintbrush here. And then we're going to um, simply start adhering it on. So as you can see, it's gonna start sticking onto our sample piece here. All right, I'm just put a little bit more on there. Then use our paintbrush to kind of just spread it out a little bit.
All right. And then you're going to um, continue to do it until you fill in the entire section of it, just like in here. All right. And then the final thing um, for our design is to um, take our paint and we're going to begin um, putting dots of paint on our wood. So we're going to take our paper plate again that we use for our concrete and then we're going to begin finishing up this awesome design. So for uh, my paint, I have white acrylic paint. All right, and then we're going to take our toothpick, which is here, and then we're going to start um, simply putting dots on our wood. So I'm just going to take this little demo piece here. And you're going to start putting little dots. Um, for me, um, repetition is important um, part of my um, studio practice because it allows me to um, achieve freedom um, from um, just the past, you know, so I kind of just rethink it. And then my art itself um, turns into a scapegoat itself to um, release um, everything that I've felt from the past. So you're gonna just continue to do that until you reach um, all the areas of your wood. Um, it could be some areas or can just, it doesn't have to be every area. But once you're done, it's going to end up looking like this. Um, I definitely wish I could, you know, stay on here with you guys longer because of course with jewelry, it takes, it definitely takes time, but um, I hope you guys got all the information and the instructions needed to definitely finish it out. And um, once you're done uh, with your pendant, you're going to simply um, attach any kind of necklace cord that you have. Um, this one here is a um, rubber cord um, that I purchased off of um, Rio Grande. And um, it's definitely awesome. I'm gonna um, show you guys how it look um, once you put it on. All right. So you just pull it and then you just insert it. And then this is how it looks. So I'm gonna kind of stand up just a little bit and then you see how it kind of just sits on you. And that is the pendant that I had for you guys using alternative materials. So I definitely um, thank you guys for tuning in to this workshop and um, that is definitely it. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you.